And uh, our uh, talk is based on, uh, oh, uh, one thing I want to mention, anything that we say that's wrong, that's me. All the rest is from the Lord. And uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. And the next verse, uh, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Well, we uh, looked at uh, uh, peace there and strong. It's uh, H7965. Uh, 7965. And the interesting thing is perfect peace is listed as uh, 7965, 7965. And we've appreciated whenever uh, the Lord has uh, something like peace here really in there twice, it's putting an emphasis on it. And so uh, we looked up in Strong's uh, there, and the meaning of it is uh, of the word shalom. Everyone recognizes that. Uh, and it means safe, that is figuratively well, happy, friendly, also abstractly welfare, that is health, prosperity, and peace. So, uh, thinking about our lord in the hymn there when uh, the disciples were afraid and he said peace be still and there was a great calm and that should be what this scripture uh, does for each of us and they were amazed <laughs> and uh, we should be amazed too at the peace that comes over us even though we're in difficult trials and experiences, uh, especially uh, when you're usually at, at your limit with something. <laughs> uh, we have brethren recently that have passed kidney stones. Uh, I was one of them last year. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, that can be pretty intense with the flesh, but we know that even if it feels like you're going to die, that's no problem fact that'd be the best thing that could happen finish our course go beyond the veil and but we know the lord never allows any experience to go beyond that which we can bear and that's a very wonderful comfort and uh when uh we looked up the scripture and we normally uh turn on the comments every time like uh, uh brother jim martin mentioned uh uh, you turn on the comments and then you start looking at reprint articles. You start uh, uh, looking at uh, the details of a scripture. And in this one, of course, thou would be Jehovah God, our heavenly father. And who is he given us watch guard over with is our head, our Lord Jesus. So, uh, but primarily from God, and Jesus would tell us that. The words I speak are not mine. They're the words of him who sent me. And uh, so God will keep him. And we appreciated him uh, in reprint 5432 is a class who has gone further than the condition of peace with God. And we have uh, peace with God from the uh, uh learning the truth and realizing uh, justification is possible for us. Uh, that gave us a measure of peace, but the peace of God is different. And that's what it's referring to here. Uh, the hymn class are the ones that went past the peace with God and have the peace of God. And it's those who have made a full, unreserved consecration to do his will, even unto death. And then keeps them in perfect peace, which is the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And then we like Job uh, 34, 29, uh, too. Uh, there are a lot of comments, by the way, on this uh, and, and on many of the other 
articles that we've looked at in here, and we've only pulled little uh, sections from the various ones. So if you uh, look at the handout and look up the articles, you'll be way more blessed. <laughs> and then uh, when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And boy, that is for sure. And in the midst of the time of trouble, God would have his people at rest and in peace in him. So even though we see uh, in the anarchy phase of, of the trouble on mankind, uh, they are just uh, kind of going crazy with everything. We really feel sorry for them because we know what's coming. <laughs> the blessing of all the families of the earth, and soon the Lord will say, peace be still, and the raging waves of the sea, class of mankind, will be calmed. And then, uh, then we would like to uh, uh, look at another comment here. He says, no matter what the outward conditions may be, so what's he mean by that amid the turmoil and troubles that are happening. Well, the outward conditions might be our fleshly reaction. And he says, not in an outward sense, but an inward tranquility. That's where the peace of God is. The new creature should be at peace. And that, where does it come from? A strong, unwavering faith is also in reprint 5432. Then he says, in proportion as we receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, we all pray for that, uh, most likely every day, more time, more than one time a day, I'm sure. Uh, I know uh, from experience there. And so uh, it's in proportion as we receive the Spirit of God and develop in character likeness to our Lord Jesus, who was not blown around by any wind of doctrine. And, uh, and he was, remember, he was the only one that was calm when, the, uh, when he went into the trial in Jerusalem. All the people were in an uproar. And uh, uh, Pilate was all <laughs> distressed and, and about it too. And but Jesus was calm. Depend on full obedience. There's the key, and the giving unreservedly to God of time, talents, influence, life, and all. That's what we consecrated. We gave our all to the Lord. Are we doing it? If we are, then we'll have perfect peace. And when, whenever we have unrest, we need to work on it. <laughs> and uh, I noted the in proportion up there in the one comment. Keep that in mind. Uh, to enjoy this, we must have unswerving trust in our Father's love and abiding faithfulness. He who has called us is faithful who will do it. <laughs> and uh, we can't do it in our own strength. Uh, we're not to be at peace with the flesh either. Why? We're at warfare with the flesh. <laughs> putting it down and every other evil thing. And so uh, the next comment is on the part that we really appreciate here, and it's in proportion again, uh, stayed on thee. No one can retain this peace whose mind is not stayed fixed on God. And our peace is in proportion to our staying qualities. So the more we keep our mind fixed on our heavenly father and his love, his plan, his wisdom, mercy, power, uh, when we keep those things in mind and appreciating everything on the universe uh, uh, yesterday, there, that is huge, huge power 
to uh, create all that. And our heavenly father had his only begotten son do it. The work of his fingers. And when he raised Jesus from the dead to the divine nature, that was by God's mighty power. And so spirit beings of the divine nature have way, way, way more power than uh, the universe has in it. And that puts things in a really good perspective, and it's a good thing to think about. And so one thing that I have a tendency to do is when I happen to notice uh, phrases like see to it in proportion, I look up and uh, do a search on the Most Holy Faith website. I search for in proportion because uh, that looked like a really uh, important thing that ought to trigger our minds to helpfulness here in the narrow way. Well, in the volume, the hits are 84 paragraphs. That doesn't mean 84 times because sometimes uh, these things are repeated more than once in a paragraph. And uh, in the reprints, there's 843 paragraphs. So if we are, are looking to grow in the, in the narrow way and we uh, would like some food, <laughs> we can look up in proportion and just start going through the articles and we'll see what things we are encouraged to be strong on. Reprint uh, 5432, again, those who are uh, looking and receiving the, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, nothing can in any wise hurt these. And it's, of course, as new creatures than anything else for the destruction of the flesh is also a good thing. We're, we have consecrated it unto death. And then uh, we looked at uh, some other uh, uh, scriptures too. Psalm 29, 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people, the Lord. And these are uh, Lord here. Remember in the fifth volume, uh, Brother Russell brings out that Jehovah is only mentioned his name in the scriptures in four scriptures. And yet, his name is in there 6,512 times, Yehovah. Uh, Strong's 3068. You can do the search, and you will get uh, all of them. <laughs> and so, he will bless his people with peace. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 34, 14. I will hear what the Lord God shall speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. <laughs> so we don't want to be discouraged by the experiences the Lord permits to come on to us and test, because those experiences are to help us and strengthen us in the narrow way and in our ability, then we're being schooled in the school of Christ. And what we're going to do first, recover all mankind from sickness, sighing, crying, pain, and death. So we need to experience these things that we each have to give us more uh, knowledge and understanding to be able to help them. Mercy, I love this one here, Psalm 8510. Mercy and truth are met together. Uh, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. So righteousness and peace are, are loving each other there. And then um, we are to pray for the peace, same word, of Jerusalem that they shall prosper that that love thee. So those of natural Israel, we pray for them and we pray for the peace of spiritual Israel. Not our peace in the flesh, but in the peace as new creatures. 
uh, reprint 2572 says, uh, as true of Jerusalem the higher in the praying for the peace and her children of peace as of earthly Jerusalem. Though, here's why we want to pray for them. Though, and, and us, <laughs> those who pray for the Lord's cause seek to serve it and are proportionately blessed thereby. And so we really appreciate that. The more we pray for one another, the more we pray for the kingdom, the more we're blessed by it and strengthened by it. And uh, 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 one of the, our favorite uh, exceeding great and precious promises is 119.165. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend or stumble them. And so uh, comment in reprint 4898 there. To love God's law, then, would be to appreciate the fact that God has a great purpose to take delight in finding out what God's will is and to have full confidence in his justice, wisdom, love, and power. Great peace have all those that do so. They do not understand every dealing of divine justice. When we go into experiences, we typically, they wouldn't be a test if we already knew what the experience was going to be, how it would end and everything, but we don't understand those things when they start. But their faith holds to the fact that he is too wise to err. Thanks. I needed that. <laughs> Just what would you like me to learn from that lesson? Brother Danny McClugan said that many times in our studies back when we first came into the truth. Thus, they have peace in confiding their interest to him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things we appreciated, uh, too, was from reprint uh, 1498. And here's uh, the comment, out of thy law, uh, we, would, we would see wondrous things out of god's law psalm 119 18 out of thy law the entire word of god in a larger sense is god's law so the whole of the scriptures the whole of the volumes the meet and do season to the household of faith we want to take that as law for us and um Matthew 4, 4, why do we take all of it? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Who said that? Our Lord Jesus. Who did he say it to? The adversary who was tempting him. So we were really uh, uh, thankful uh, uh, for that knowledge too. And why did Jesus want to do God's law all the time. He loved it. Oh, how I love thy law. It's my meditation all the day. And so uh, we now want to go to uh, reprint 5431. We'll get a few little excerpts from that. Peace with God and the peace of God. Two scriptures here. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5.1. Then Isaiah 26.3 is referring to the peace of God. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. To have come into a condition of peace with God means that one has become reconciled to God. This implies a former condition of alienation or enmity through wicked works. Peace with God then means that this estrangement from God is a thing of the past and that the estranged one is now in harmony with God. He that has turned his back upon sin and seeking to walk in the path of righteousness. 
This is a step of faith and is accompanied by a reformation of life. But in our second text above, the prophet is referring to a class who have gone further than the condition of peace with God. He is referring, speaking of a class who have become into possession of the peace of God, which passes all understanding. As the Apostle Paul declares, this peace can come only to those who have given themselves unreservedly to God. Their time, their talents, their influence, their life, their all. <clears throat> Gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. These have a peace that none others can know. And isn't that so true? And isn't it wonderful to be together with those who have this peace? This peace of God rules the heart, even amid turmoil and trouble. It is an inward tranquility and rest, uh, which is the direct result of a close personal relationship of the soul with God. <clears throat> it is the peace of God because it is a peace that God only can give, a peace which only his own can know. And I remember thinking uh, when we were learning the truth, uh, we appreciated it as being the truth. And then after being spirit begotten, we knew the truth, and there is no comparison between those two. And we are so thankful and rejoicing too with all of you that have the same uh, hope uh, in the narrow way. What a precious legacy our dear Lord left with his disciples when he went away from them. Remember, just before his ascension, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And when he said that to them, were they suddenly at peace? No, they still had uh, peace with God, but not the peace of God until Pentecost. <laughs> and then, wow. This was truly a legacy of priceless value, and it is the inheritance of the entire church throughout the age, even to its close. If our hearts continue to be stayed on Christ by faith, and we do not let go our anchor, we shall be kept through some of the oh, whoop, all the tempests of life, however severely we may be tossed however fiercely the storms may rage. The language of our master's heart was, O righteous father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. He had been with the father from the beginning and knew his love and goodness. He had seen the manifestations of his power. He had marked his loving kindness. So we who have come into similar relationship to God have come thus to know and trust his love and faithfulness. And uh, of course, we don't have peace in the flesh, <laughs> and uh, but we're assured that we shall have the victory over our flesh in his strength, not ours. This gives us rest and peace in all our experiences. And we need to think on those things. And then he says, it has been written for our instruction and comfort. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. This faith is built on the testimony of God's word, a sure foundation. It's only through strong and unwavering faith that the peace of God will abide in his children. And remember, if we stop <laughs> uh, studying, if we stop uh, 
are in any way in the narrow way, we lose that peace of God proportionately as we're not being faithful. And uh, no good thing will he withhold from, from the ones walking faithfully. All things shall work together for their good. He shall bear thee up in his hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Then let us be strong. The peace of God is not dependent on the smile of fortune, nor on physical health. <laughs> Many of our dear brethren have experienced that recently. Nor upon a host of friends. But it is a peace which abides even when health fails, or poverty comes in, or death steals us from us the treasures of our hearts. It is a peace which none of the changes and vicissitudes of life can take from us. No one can take it from us. And which enemies are powerless to touch. What a gift so rich could our father give to his children and our strength, our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that is a lot of help. <clears throat> then uh, in the uh, uh, reprint of 54, 32 starts on 31, the peace is dependent on full obedience. So we rejoice, rejoice further to know the wondrous provision for the whole world in the future. We know what's going to happen for them. All these things form a firm basis for peace and joy and confidence in the Lord. But our peace is proportionate to our constancy, our staying qualities, <laughs> whose mind is stayed on the... How many times have you went through a difficult experience and opened the volumes and started reading or opened the scriptures and started reading and pretty soon you're lost in a heavenly place <laughs> and you forget about what other things have happened to you. You have your mind stayed fixed on God. It is not a piece of recklessness nor sloth but a peace begotten of God himself through his promises, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might become partakers of the divine nature. What's that mean? If we didn't accept them and believe them, we won't be partakers of the divine nature. And, uh, and he mentions in here too, those promises of which are our present peace and joy, and they're just a foretaste of the peace and joy to come beyond the veil. Our July 6th manna, we appreciated along with the exceeding great, great and precious promise for the day, uh, and again, the Most Holy Faith website, what is man that fear or reverences the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. In quiet and the exceeding great and precious promise, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Our strength is in the Lord, not in self. And uh, uh, then he mentioned what we, we appreciated in the comment for the manna there. It is not for us to supervise the trials and difficulties which may be set up. It is for us to make an unreserved consecration of ourselves to the Lord and then leave to him the decision of how great shall be our trials and besetments. How could we complain then if we leave it in his hands and know Romans 8, 28 is absolutely true. Every experience is exactly what we need. Then we also uh, were really appreciating reprint uh, 2411. And uh, this was, and, and when you see these in, in the uh, reprints, they're always really good. And what we're got, we just changed the year. This was 1899. 
greeting and exhortation for the new year, 2023. Dear friends of the Watchtower family, please accept our editorial greetings and good wishes as we cross the threshold of another year. We trust that each of us can truthfully sing with the poet, looking back, we'll praise the way he hath led us day by day. And in this reprint, we only have a little bit of it here, but uh, we just uh, really appreciated uh, a statement here, what it means to be in the school of Christ. <laughs> and I liked uh, Brother Wes at a discourse, uh, the school we're in is out of this world. You have the big universities, uh, Stanford and and ones like that on earth that, that are, if you look, there's like four of them listed as the best uh colleges on plant or universities on planet earth they are nothing compared to the school that we are in if at first we as pupils get confused and mistake self-will for god's will boy that can happen awful easy and our teacher points this out to us by some failure of our projects we are not to be rebellious and resentful of the lesson, nor to be discouraged and disheartened. On the contrary, we are to profit by every experience, seeking that the lessons of one day shall be put into practice and become our aids on following days. So when we're in the school of Christ, we don't know everything. In fact, when we started, we knew nothing. <laughs> In fact, coming from a, a, a church, we knew less than nothing and vanity <laughs> before we learned the truth. And so everything we've learned about God's plans is from him. Like Jesus said to Peter after asking the disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied to him, not, boy, I taught you well, didn't I? No, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And so every bit of the truth that we know and have proven and, and know that it's from God is from him. And then he says, pitfalls to be avoided. <laughs> we want to outline this course of study and to ask all the dear brethren and sisters of the Watchtower family who have not really start, not already started this course <laughs> to take it up for the year 2023, 1899 there. Blessed are sure to be the result. And, and he's got a section then on think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. And this is partially quoted in the July 3rd manna, which we've just had a few days ago. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. That's the manna, Psalm 16, 8. The whole paragraph, well, actually, uh, most of the paragraph, uh, don't have time for whole paragraphs on everything here. Are you tempted to repine? Do we have an experience and we complain about it? To feel disappointed at your lot in life or your experiences, by the way. That ought to pull some flags up there if we if something happens. Oh, man, why did that happen to me? <laughs> don't do that. This is the time to remember that all repining, discontent, and disappointments indicate that self-will in you is not so dead as you had hoped. For he who has buried, here's the, the text that's in our July 3rd manna, for he who has buried his own will completely in the will of the Lord can know no disappointment. But in every affair of his life, he sees by faith divine appointment or supervision. 
and hears the word of the Lord and all of life's affairs assuring him all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. It is one of the evidences of reaching the graduating condition of heart when we are able to take the oppositions of the great adversary and of the world and, here's the big one, of our own flesh, patiently, uncomplainingly, unmurmuringly, joyfully. Does, uh, you know, you're like, oh, man. But here's the key. As a part of the disciplinary experience meted out to us by our all wise and all loving Lord. And every time I read that, you think about we're to have perfect peace and you, you read patiently, uncomplainingly, unmurmuringly and joyfully our peace level goes down, down, down until we read as part of the disciplinary experience meted out to us by our all wise and all loving Lord. Then we have our peace increased beyond what it was because we appreciate more the why of our experiences. Then there's another really good reprint, uh, reprint 5905 on training our affections heavenward. That's where we're, if we're going to have perfect peace, it needs to be stayed on God. And so training our affections ever heavenward. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Colossians 3, 2. As children of God, we should have far higher aspirations than the world has. The Lord wishes us to be intelligent children. He's chosen the weak <laughs> things of the earth <laughs> uh, to be the bride for Christ, but he is giving us intelligence. And so we want to uh, learn in the school of Christ. And what we fill our bushel baskets with, this is the one that has about the boy that liked to read novels. His father gave him a bushel of apples, told him to take it out, fill it with wood chips, and then told him to put the apples back in. And what a wonderful lesson that was. And that's what happens if we're looking at too much news, <laughs> too much in the newspapers, on the internet, uh, looking at uh, too many flowers, even mentions uh, in, in here and on these things, and mentions that if Jesus were here today in the flesh, uh, of course, he's spirit being of divine nature, so he won't be, but if he was here in the flesh, although his body is, we should be interested in what's going on that's fulfilling scriptures showing where we are on the stream of time. Then there's a wonderful uh, paragraph in here about we are uh, the bride of Christ preparing for <laughs> the wedding. So then, dear brethren and sisters, we see the course we are to pursue. We are to be the bride of Jehovah's great on. Therefore, we must be very diligent to get everything in readiness for the approaching marriage. When we consider the preparations which an earthly bride makes for her nuptials, we should have a good illustration of how important it is for us to have our garments all prepared, our robes spotless, our embroidery work all completed beforehand. The temple goes together without the sound of a hammer. You and I are privileged to have the most important part in the greatest, grandest wedding ever held. <laughs> Therefore, we should be ready. 
we who were by nature children of wrath, even as others are now privileged to be cleansed from all defilement by the precious blood of Christ. Daily also we are to wash with wa the water of the word. We are to be purified from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and be fitted to become the bride of our heavenly king. Wow. And he mentions in that reprint, what do we love in each other? It's not what we look like. It's how much is each one like the character of our Lord Jesus. And we see that in our brethren. And that's what we love. And there's a beautiful section in uh, the sixth volume, page uh, 626 through 630, on we wrestle not merely with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places and why the ministry of evil is permitted. Mankind is suffering under it, under it, but they're not being judged now. And they don't know the truth, and we do. And God is making use of these implements. Uh, sometimes I thank Satan that things are going just especially weird, uh, that uh, thanks for doing what God permitted you to do that I can have these wonderful lessons and I appreciate it. And he's very persistent and consistent in doing things uh, to help us in the narrow way and to the very opposite of his intention, but permitted by God for our blessing and strengthening. And then uh, we want to skip down to, uh, there's a reprint, uh, 1884, uh, pressing uh, toward the mark. And of course, that's our dear Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And he describes the Apostle as a faithful forerunner. Of, of the prize, and we know they were, all 12 apostles were the 12 foundations of the New Jerusalem, so we know they were all faithful. And in this, he mentions uh, uh, that we should especially observe our beloved brother Paul. And here he gives us, uh, 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 first I'll mention what he uh, in here, the Apostle Paul says, brethren, I can't count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark, etc. Here are four considerations, note, it said four, considerations which we do well to ponder most carefully. First, the apostle made a humble, sober estimate of his spiritual standing and strength. He did not feel puffed up at being a chosen vessel of the Lord to bear his name before the Gentile. He did not consider himself the great apostle, nor vaunt himself in any way. He was so far, and or and so far was he from boasting of his spiritual attainments that he humbly reminded the church of the possibility of himself being a castaway, even after he had preached to others. Unless he continued to stand fast in his integrity and to grow in grace. First Corinthians 9:27. And while he held up before them Christ as the power of God and the wisdom of God and the model for their imitation, he humbly declared that he with them was striving to follow the pattern, Christ, while trusting alone in the merit of his sacrifice to make up his own shortcomings. So, you you think of the the apostle Paul and and everything he did, 
he was concentrating, like Brother Russell said, on making his own calling an election sure, uh, too, and we want to do the same. Thus, he was relieved of that greatest hindrance to spiritual development. That ought to prick our ears up there. Self-satisfaction. And here's a phrase that I've really, really appreciated for many years now. For if any man considers that he has attained a satisfactory spiritual state from that very moment, he may date the beginning of his spiritual decline. No present attainment can be satisfactory to a sincere follower of Christ who studiously endeavors to copy the perfect pattern. Secondly, we observe the apostle's singleness of purpose. This one thing I do. He did not try to do several things. If he had, he would surely have failed. We're going to have to skip ahead a little bit here. Let's see. Okay. Thirdly, we observe that he determined to forget the things that are behind. Had he looked back and returned again uh, to what he had before, he, he would have went into second death. And he wouldn't have had the peace and joy uh, and the, uh, if you think about all of the things that, that he <laughs> went through and uh, being stoned and beaten and, and imprisoned and, and everything and thinking of Paul and Silas in prison singing hymns, what was he doing? <laughs> he was keeping his mind on the Lord. And he had perfect peace in prison. He had perfect peace when he was being stoned. Stephen is another good example. They saw his face as it were an angel as they were stoning him to death. And he said, and lay not this sin to their charge. He knew they just didn't understand. Fourthly, he reached forward to the things that were before. His faith took hold of the promises of God with such tenacity that to him they were living realities. Read the foreword to the exceeding great and precious promises. He mentions that tenacity and them becoming living realities to us and fully believe, inspiring zeal and faithfulness. Upon the healthy themes, he allowed his mind to dwell. Think on the good. As he also advised others, saying, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You have the peace of God when you're doing that. When we think on other things, ugh, <laughs> I think of that commercial, oh, I could have had a V8. I think of that many times if we start looking into some earthly thing. Uh, uh, and that was Philippians 4, 8 there. This is the way he reached forward to the things before. And thus also we must gather our inspiration to holiness and our courage to endurance and perceive persevering faithfulness even unto death. The Christian's habit of thought has much indeed to do with his spiritual progress or retrogression, as it is also an index of his spiritual state. And good habits of thought need to be very carefully cultivated. And uh, growing up on a farm, I know what happens when you go out into a field and you cultivate, uh, for instance, a cornfield. Uh, what it does is it breaks up the earth. So uh, the moisture and nutrition and air and uh, can get in there to the plants, uh, roots, 
And the next day after doing it, you walk out there and go, wow, I never would imagine that could happen in one day. And, uh, and it doesn't happen until you, it grows good, but not like that until when you cultivate it. And so our faith and trust in the Lord is the same. We cultivate it, it will grow. And Brother Russell even talks about our capacity. The Lord will increase for more growth. And so don't worry about saturating, not gonna happen. <laughs> and by habit of thought, we mean the normal condition to which the mind habitually returns in the moments of mental leisure. So we need to cultivate that. If we get a chance to relax, thinking of the Lord, the truth, brethren, sending a note, these things being angels of mercy to our brethren. Uh, we have that privilege and opportunity to do those things. Then, you know what happens when we all get together and we start talking about the truth, we just can't quit. Fifthly, remember he said four things? <laughs> Fifthly, we note the apostles' energetic zeal which not only reached forward in contemplation of and desire for the beauties of holiness and the heavenly glory, but also earnestly pressed toward the mark of the, for the prize. It is not enough that we consider and desire these things. We must also run for them, strive for them, and study and endeavor by the grace of God so to so run as to obtain. The apostle was a grand example of earnest endeavor to attain perfection, but not of the ultimate perfection, which was in Christ only, our perfect example. And it is his zeal and intense earnestness in striving to copy Christ and to accomplish his will that we should imitate. Let us mark all such worthy examples while we also press toward the mark of the character for the attainment of the prize of our high calling. We'll repeat what Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid from our dear Lord Jesus. And may the Lord add his blessing.